Hey everybody, so I'm back with another video and I'm going to be doing something kind of different. Um, I'm going to be doing kind of a live commentary on my layering system that I used for this season of ice climbing and my layering system that I used for last season of ice climbing. Um, this season of ice climbing will be the first section of the video, the first half, and then the next half of the video will be last season for what I did for my layering system. And yeah, so that's what I'm gonna kind of be doing. Um, I do have to say a couple things first. Number one, if you are curious about these products and you want more updated information, make sure to go to my website. It's kellenerickson.com. Um, on the website, I have more kind of current thoughts on gear. Um, super simple, all you have to do is just go to the website and then you'll be presented with like a grid of pictures and all those pictures are just individual items and if you click on the item normally I'll have it where there's a video on top and then like like continuously updated thoughts on it um so if you're looking for more current information on products that I'm using that's a great place to go it's kind of it's kind of like my blog so yeah that's a great place to go to and uh I did notice when I was editing this video that I, I would raise my arms up to, you know, kind of show how they were for the sleeve length when you're raising up, but I didn't realize that my arms are out of shot. I will try in the video when I see you, when I do that, I'll just explain whether they were short or long. Yeah, so with that being said, let's just kind of get into the video. Okay, so the first item we have here is the Patagonia Capling Air. Um, these are base layers from Patagonia. They're made with, I think they're made with merino wool and polyester. They're a great base layer, um, super warm. I do have the top that has the hood, and then I also have the bottoms. I also did buy a crew neck version of it um, just for those warmer days when I didn't want the hood. Um, the fabric is super stretchy and I've actually been really surprised on how warm it is. Right right there, <laughs> I've raised my arms up and they, they're, the sleeves are long enough. They don't, I don't have a, a problem with them. Super stretchy, super warm, super breathable. Um, they wig really good. Very, yeah, like the top stretches down pretty far. And uh, that's kind of the Kaplan Air. Okay, so the next item we have here is the Black Diamond Coefficient LT Hybrid Vest. It's a long name. Um, this is a piece I was really excited about when it first released or was first announced because it basically has everything I wanted. Um, it has insulation in the chest area which is breathable i think it's primo off silver um, so that's great um, and it's got black diamonds uh, lt polytech fleece which is essentially what i've gathered is like it's like capling thermal weight from patagonia it's i think it's r.5 is what it would be for patagonia so it's super stretchy and it's got a great warmth through weight ratio um, as you can see right there, it's pretty stretchy. I actually really like this because this vest doesn't get in the way. Um, I did buy, before this, I bought the Patagonia Nano Air vest. And I didn't use it at all. I just, I got it and I was just trying it out just to see if I like the fit. And I kind of saw that the, when I was raising my arms up, I would have some problems with the shoulders is that they were kind of pinching and they're just like overall too much fabric. Um, so I didn't really like that. So I returned it. And then I got this vest, which I've so far I've been super happy with it. Um, it's everything I've ever wanted really for a great layering system for ice climbing. It keeps me at a perfect temperature while I'm climbing. I don't get too hot. And then it also leaves me to where it just leaves me warm enough even when I'm not climbing. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a great vest. I'm really happy with this vest as part of my layering system for this season. Okay, so... The next item we have here is the Patagonia Dual Aspect Bibs. Um, I did do a video review on these, um, but now you can kind of see how they are fully putting on. Um, they're a little awkward to get into. I don't really <laughs> like that, how they get in. Um, it's just when you're a little bit taller and you have to like crunch down and just fold over just to get them on, it's kind of a pain. Um, definitely hard to put on or take off in a car, <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, but overall, like the the I do like how the straps are. They're pretty they're pretty light and they're stretchy, so there's not like restriction. And they feel pretty secure. Um, this is a pain though with the zippers on the back. They have a little like flat 
button that you press in and it snaps, that thing is so annoying because you can never tell if it's actually connected or not. And reaching behind, it's just, it's overall hard to do. Um, but overall, the fit on these is actually pretty great. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how they are. They're pretty flexible. Um, and I've actually grown to really like these bibs. Um, at first, I was kind of just climbing in soft shell pants and just going with nothing thinking about nothing about it but when I started climbing in these I really like the protection you get um like I said they're pretty they're pretty stretchy um you can do a high knee no problem no really restriction um only big kind of thing that I don't like is that there's a lot of like extra material and that's a little bit easier to get snagged on on like whether snagging with your crampons or just snag on anything uh, I did put a hole in them so that was kind of a bummer but Overall, they're a great bib. Um, just getting into them and the snaps are pretty, they're pretty annoying, but yeah. Um, so let's get into kind of the next item, also with the bottom view of the dual aspect pants. Um, but these are my boots that I'm using this year and they are the La Sportiva G-Tech. Um, super happy with how they are. Um, they're based off of the Equilibrium Last and I've done videos on this before. Um, but just as a quick overview, yeah, they're based on the Equilibrium Last. Um, I love the Equilibrium boots. They fit me really well. They're a little bit kind of, they're semi-wide in the forefoot, but narrow in the heel. And that's something that I just, it fits my foot really well. Um, these boots are really lightweight. Um, and they're actually really good to walk in. They're just a good walking boot. Um, still super stiff as of any mountaineering boot. The built-in kind of like gaiters, really nice to have. Um, waterproof zippers are great. Um, it does have a bow dial and that's super convenient. Um, and also kind of just getting right here into the dual aspect pants. They do have a Rico reflector at the bottom and then there's that snap that is very difficult. Um, and you can kind of see right there, there's just a lot of extra fabric on the bottom of the Patagonia dual aspect, just a little bit easier to snag. Um, but going back to the boots, great boots. I like them. Um, so far I've, I, I wanted to climb with my other boots, but realistically, I don't think I'm like, I don't think I'll get another day in my other boots. I think I'll just be in my G-Techs. They just fit really nice. They climb really well. They're super responsive. Um, I definitely, I mean, they're just, they've, they've helped my climbing a bit. Um, I switched to monos because of them and you know, they just, they look good. They're a good looking boot. I'm not going to lie. All the Sportiva's boots look just, they look really cool. Um, but yeah, again, kind of going over, oh, there's, there's a little hole I got. Um, I did patch that up, but there's just, yeah, with those dual aspects, there's just a lot of extra fabric, and that kind of gets annoying. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of the dual aspect. Now moving on, this is the main shell I've been using this season. It's the Patagonia Storm 10 Jacket. Um, this is uh, another jacket that came out um, that was very similar to this was the M10 jacket and the Storm 10 is just realistically the spiritual successor to it. It's a great uh, slim fitting shell, super lightweight. I think it's 10 denier, um, super lightweight fabric. There we go. Yeah, so my hand, my arms are cut off, um, but what I will say is that the sleeves are a little bit shorter for me. Like I said, I do have long arms, so I'm not surprised by any of this. Um, but is kind of annoying to deal with. Um, there is a sh uh, little shock cord at the bottom to kind of pulls on the hem so it can kind of seal it in. It's a little bit weirder because it is a lightweight uh, design. It only pulls from one side. You can kind of see the fabric pinching on one side. Um, so it, you don't get an even pull. Um, the hood on this jacket is actually why I've been using it the most this season. Um, I Because I switched to the Sirocco helmet for ice climbing and rock climbing, um, and in this case for ice climbing, this is the only shell that doesn't like mess with that helmet. When I look up, um, other shells that I've used have like pulled the helmet back. Whereas when I have the hood up on this one, it works perfectly. I just love it. Um, and also talking about the hood, it does also have a Rico reflector. So that's always cool to have on your ice climbing stuff, knowing that you got reflectors on you. Um, it does have Velcro at the cuff so you can kind of seal in. But at that point, you can kind of see just even base like stretching out, it's a little bit shorter on the wrist and especially right there. And that's kind of how it looks when you're, when you put your arms up 
that kind of just recedes back. And that, I kind of have that problem with all Patagonia products, but I think, I mean, it makes sense for me when I have a longer arm span. I think I have like a plus four eighth index. So I've definitely got a longer arm. So it's not not normal, but overall it's a great shell. And, you know, it's, I've, I've put it through a lot this season so far and it's just stood up to everything. Yeah, so the next product we have here is the Patagonia DOS Lite. Surprisingly, um, this has been my main belay jacket um, for this whole season. Granted, though, because I did get that vest, I haven't been using a lot of belay jackets because I've been staying pretty warm. Um, but this is the jacket I normally go to to throw in my pack, whether it be for, you know, ice cragging or for doing an actual, like, pursuit of a certain route um it's great because you get a good amount of insulation um it's 65 grams of insulation which is the same as the micro puff but you get more climbing specific stuff um right there i just raised my arms their sleeves are just a little bit short they're not too bad um the dual zipper is super nice to have i mean it's a standard for all belay jackets um but yeah it's a great jacket it's really warm um, for how lightweight it is and how small it is um arms sideways going across there you go still out of frame but kind of short not too bad um, kind of higher hand pockets the hand pockets are pretty small in this um, same thing with the regular DOS market but with this one it's pretty small the hood is super nice um, it's all alpine compatible you can see that there's a little like bungee right there not a bungee but elastic to keep things and then you do also have the pull cord on the back so you can kind of cinch it down um, I do have a, a review on this and it kind of go into a little bit more kind of the specs on this and that one and also on my on my website I kind of go into it a little bit better but overall it's been a great jacket just because of how small it gets and you know I don't need a lot of warmth but like on the super cold days I'd want a warmer jacket but for majority of the days this one does everything I need it to be. So this is the um, regular Patagonia DOS Parka. Um, I haven't really used this a whole lot this year, like I said, I've been using the DOS Lite, but last season I used the DOS Parka a lot for colder days, and I've been wearing this jacket actually for not only climbing, but for also just like walking around town when it's super cold. Um, arms are decent. Um, it does come down a little bit, but with this one, you have a little thumb thing, a um, little thumb bungee that you can put around. And by doing that, it keeps the sleeves in the in a great place. It keeps them in the same place the whole time, which is super nice. It doesn't pull too much on your, um, on your hand, so that's super nice. Um, flexibility is really good in this jacket. It's definitely got room. I definitely I have all my other regular layers on. It's got pretty tall hand pockets, um, but they're pretty narrow, so that's kind of weird. Um, does have a chest pocket. Uh, does have the dual zippers that every belay jacket has. And as you can kind of tell, this one goes a little bit farther down than the uh, DOS light, so it definitely gives more coverage, which is pretty nice. Um, I mean, it does also have drop in pockets, which is pretty essential for, you know, a lot of ice climbing because then you can keep your gloves in there. And then even with rock climbing, you can put your um, rock shoes in there so you can keep them warm on cold days. Pretty, uh, it's a nice feature to have. Um, there you go with the hand pockets. And there's also a bungee at the bottom. There's a, yeah, a bungee on both sides. So then you can pull it and then you can tighten the hem around. So then you kind of seal in that warmth even more. There you can kind of see, pull it on one side and I'll pull it on the other. Um, it does it does definitely seal in. Um, then when you, when you do things like that, um, when you raise your arms up, it definitely like, makes the jacket go up and it gets in a weird place so I'm kind of conflicted like years previous I always wanted like I needed a hem cord just to steal in everything and it is nice on super windy days but like if you have a harness on you're never going to be doing that it's only great if you're probably like rock if you're like bouldering and it's windy like that's a great thing to have um, but yeah it's not too important anymore I think um, it's definitely nice but so kind of going to the hood it's kind of it's the same thing same story as the DOS light it's got an alpine compatible hood it's got a bungee in the back so you can suck the hood up um 
yeah, it's a great hood. Lots of insulation in it. Super nice. I mean, overall, this is just a great, this is a great synthetic jacket for fillet jacket. It's warm and it's just, yeah, a great overall jacket for filleting. Okay, so this has been a new piece of my collection. This is the Patagonia Alploff Down Parka. Um, this replaces the Patagonia Grade 7 jacket, and I do have a couple videos on this. Um, I don't have one, anything on the website yet, because I really haven't used this yet. Um, we did get a cold spell this season, but I didn't actually go out and to use it, so I haven't used it a lot. Um, but this is how it kind of fits. You know, it's a big bigger jacket it's less bulkier than the grade 7 which is super nice and it does have a cool feature that there's no all the baffles are they're not sewn in baffles which is a super nice thing it's a super cool thing what Patagonia was able to do um, overall it's just it's a big jacket I mean it, but it's meant to be it's meant to be for super cold weather um, definitely kind of the it's definitely on a bulkier side like that is a nice thing about the DOS part because it's got a tighter silhouette but I mean with this it's just you can it's everything you've ever wanted it's got two chest pockets that are big and deep the hand pockets are big and deep um, it's got the dual zippers it's got a big hood um, definitely big hood lots of insulation in it. it can take a helmet anytime and it does have that cord in the back so you can cinch it down which is always nice to have um, but yeah it's you know it's a super warm jacket I'm definitely glad to have it and it's definitely going to be a niche jacket that I own um, and also, you know, for how big, how much insulation in, is in it, it doesn't look like too overly stuffed and it actually looks pretty good. Um, I've been pretty surprised with that. Um, even when I had the grade seven for a little bit, it just, it didn't, it didn't look the best, but, uh, yeah, there you go with the dual zipper and you can kind of see there's like a little draft tube and so that's pretty nice against the zipper. Um, so it's just make sure air does not cutting through the zipper and getting you cold. And then it does have bigger drop in pockets on both sides. And then the, uh, there is a hem cord that goes through the bottom that can seal it out. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, as I was trying to figure it out right there, I had my hand in my pocket cause I thought it was going through the pocket, but it goes through the, um, it's just, it's a kind of a weird design for a hem cord. It's definitely kind of awkward. Um, and then even when I had the hem cord, done and tight um you'll kind of see how it fits it's just kind of weird i almost think this jacket's better when you don't have the hem cord um clinched down um even zipping it was kind of it was kind of weird like the dot but that might just be overall like the how much fills in the jacket like in general like sometimes it's hard to see the pockets even just where the zipper is so that might just might be a you know a big jacket problem but the hem cord is definitely a little bit weird um because this jacket, because it is a unisex um, fit, you know, it doesn't, it's not super long. It's long enough, but because it's meant for every, a very general body type, it's just, it kind of fits weird in some areas. Like the arms are definitely long. They're about as long as the Das Parka, but yeah, they're just kind of weird. To start things off, here we have the Patagonia Kathleen Cool Merino shirt. And this is what I use as my base layer. Um, it's great because it is merino and it doesn't stink and it's super lightweight and it wicks moisture really well. I liked using this last year for my base layer, um, but I also had another base layer which we'll get into in just a little bit. But overall, it's a great shirt. I'll cover this in the summertime because I think it's definitely a great standalone piece, but yeah. Great use of the base layer. Really like this shirt, um, both long sleeve and short sleeve. So the next base layer I use is the Patagonia Kaplan Cool Daily shirt. Um, I use this more specifically with layering with fleece uh, as it's slick and it doesn't get caught. And that's where the Merino one kind of has a problem is that because the Merino is kind of, it's not smooth, it catches on the fleece and things get pulled and everything doesn't feel right. Um, so I didn't really do much different with pants. Um, so the only difference I had was the boots and these are the La Sportiva G5 Evo. These are the boots I pretty much used all of last year. Um, they're, they're a great, great uh, boot. 
I liked using them last year. The only problem I had is that because my foot's a little bit lower volume, um, it wasn't always like the best fit for me. They definitely climbed great, um, but not having the best fit is definitely kind of an issue for me. Um, just because I had to crank down the bow dial, just the bow dial just down so far and like almost to the point where it couldn't tighten even more and I still felt like the boot was kind of loose and I just, I don't have that problem with the G-Tech. Um, but overall, they're still a great boot. I kind of plan on using them every once in a while. I've got a feeling that if I want to do some mixed climbing, I think I might gravitate towards using these. I know, and that kind of sounds weird, is it's just because it's like, they're heavier than the G-Tech, but I think because they're a little bit stiffer than the G-Tech, I think it'd be a better boot for like as a platform. So might consider that. I'll, I'll let you guys know if I ever try that. Check out either on Instagram or even on the website. I'll probably write an update if I do that. But yeah, so the G-Tech or the G5 Evo, great boot. Haven't really used them this year, but I used them all last year and they were... They were my go-to boot. They worked really well. Okay, so kind of getting to the mid layers of what I used for last last season. This is the Patagonia R1 pullover hoodie. I use this a lot. Um, you know, the R1 pullover hoodie is kind of like the classic climbing piece. It's got super long arms. As I'm raising them above my head, the, the sleeve length is still right at my wrist. It's got longer arms and a longer torso meant for that. And you can kind of see there, I am wearing the Patagonia cap wing cool daily shirt because it is fleece and because it's not going to catch on the merino or yeah because it's slick it doesn't catch so that's why i use cap lean for fleece uh, overall great piece you know it's warm it's breathable to a point um just because it is a great grid fleece it just breathes pretty well the hood is super nice i love the patagonia r1 pullover hood because it just goes right up to your nose and you it's just a perfect thing so it's it's lightweight it's slim and you can just throw a helmet on top of it and you can be super warm if you're in a windy cold day like super great it's definitely one of my go-to mid-layering pieces for ice climbing or any type or any activity really just a great piece overall so the next piece i used is the now discontinued Patagonia Nano Air Light pullover. Um, I got this piece. I'm not going to lie. I did get this piece because I thought it looked awesome. But the more I kind of started looking into it, I saw it as a great piece in general because it's kind of that mid-zone between a R1 and a Nano Air um, in terms of warmth. It's right in the middle. It's a little bit warmer than a Nano. No, it's a little bit warmer than a R1 but it's not as warm as the Nano Air. Um, I use this a lot for a lot of colder days. This would just be, I'd just pair this with like a regular shirt underneath and then this and then a shell on top and it'd be perfect. Um, just plenty warm, but still breathable enough where I don't get over overly hot, but like just great on those cold days that you wouldn't really need to wear a belay jacket on top. Um, it's stretchy enough. Um, it does have like more mechanical stretch and it's decently long. Like, it follows a lot of the same stuff as the R1 pullover, where it's a little bit longer in the arms and the, a little bit longer in total length, just for, you know, making it sure that when you raise your arms up, it's not pulling up. And as you can see right there, that's the Patagonia Kaplan Cool Merino shirt. Um, I use that a lot with the Nano Air Light and the Nano Air, um, just the regular Nano Air, because the Merino, because it doesn't stink, it's great to have, um, especially for these things where you're not having to worry about like smooth layering pieces, so nothing gets caught. But uh, yeah, that was kind of Nano Air. I really liked it, and I still plan on using it sometimes. Um, might use it for more rock climbing. Um, but now let's get into the other Nano Air. It's the regular Patagonia Nano Air hoodie. You can still buy this jacket. Um, it's a great jacket. I really like it. I, I use this jacket all the time, just even if it's not for ice climbing. I just, I use it all the time. It's one of my favorite pieces. It's stretchy. Arms are a little bit shorter. Um, it's just kind of like all everything else of Patagonia's jackets. They're all just a little bit shorter. Um, great. It's just a great jacket. You know, 60 grams of insulation is a lot. And especially on the cold, cold days, like I would wear this 
and then a shell over top and I'd be plenty warm enough. Um, I wouldn't get over overly warm. Um, it is nice to have hand pockets, but you know, as a layering piece, you don't really need those pockets. There's a little bit extra bulk here and there, but just overall, it's a great jacket. Um, definitely warm and breathable enough. I mean, that's why the appeal is for the Nano Air is that it's warm, but it's also breathable. So you don't just get like super warm because a person could wear a Nano Puff, uh, but with the Nano Puff, it just doesn't breathe as much. Whereas the Nano Air just, it gets that heat off of you, um, which is super nice. And I even use this jacket Recently, I've been using it for winter trail running, and it's been working great for that. Um, so I, I do. I love this jacket. It's probably one of my favorite jackets from Patagonia. And uh, yeah, you know, it worked really well last season for those cold, cold days ice climbing. Um, other than just, you know, arms are a little bit short, but like I said, you know, that's kind of out of my control just because I have longer arms. But yeah, just a great piece and, you know, great, great fit, this piece. Okay, so I threw this one in because I've used this a couple times for ice climbing. This is the Patagonia R2 Tech Face hoodie. Um, it's basically like a soft shell with R2 fleece. And R2 fleece, if you're not familiar, is like a big grid, bigger grids than R1. And it's double the size, but it's all like lofted too. So it's great insulation. Um, but the stretchiness of the tech face because tech face is like a soft shell so it gives some it gives great wind protection and some water resistance it's like a great piece overall for like kind of you know cold days when you just want to wear a shirt underneath and just wear this i mean i've done it a couple times for ice climbing you know mobility is great um the only thing is, is that <laughs> a couple times i've used it it's gotten pretty warm um but it's been on warmer days so it could be that I still have to use it when it's been really cold and I still want to use it for that um, hood's super nice because you can go under the helmet and it's still a slim profile like a very slim profile your hearing gets a little bit muffled but ah, that's all right um pockets are great it's kind of the same silhouette as the nano air and I think that's why I definitely like it as much as the nano air um it's a great climbing jacket um just want to make sure you know where your picks are because i've already snagged it a couple times and put some holes in it um, so definitely just be aware of where your picks are um it does have a little chest pocket which comes in handy sometimes if you just want to put your phone there um, a bigger feature about this jacket too is it's actually got drop-in pockets which is kind of crazy um, but it's super convenient if you just want to store gloves in there it's it's a great jacket for that um this kind of also my spring jacket although I think I'm not going to use it as my spring jacket because I'm going to get too warm in it. But yeah, just a great jacket, for another alternative that kind of does everything. Um, I also threw this one in there. This is the Patagonia R1 Full Zip Hoodie. Um, I don't think they make this anymore, but they might. Um, this is another layering piece that I use. Um, you know, it's got it's more of a casual fleece. The fit is different from the R1 Pullover. The 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 sleeves are shorter. Uh, but I use this because it was nice because, you know, you could fully unzip it to dump more heat than the R1 pullover. Um, but overall, it's still a great jacket. It's, it's still an R1 at the end of the day. The hood's a little bit different. doesn't come down as far. It's all kind of following the same silhouette of the R2 tech face and kind of the Nano Air. Um, but here we go. Here's the shell I used last season. It's the discontinued um, Patagonia galvanized jacket. Um, so this is the main shell I used last year. I did have the Storm 10 jacket um, last year as well but I use this far more than I ever use that one it's great you know it's a climbing specific shell and you can really tell by it's it's a lot like a soft shell like it stretches and you have so much mobility but you get the protection of a hard shell where you get waterproofing so it can handle anything you really throw at it you know I've been on wet climbs and it just takes it, you know, you got features that are great, like the pit zips, and you can kind of see that the chest pockets are higher, so it accommodates for a harness, you know, the coverage is great, um, the cuffs are kind of reinforced, which is kind of nice, and sometimes, and sometimes it's not, um, especially if you're wearing a watch, it gets kind of in the way, um, but yeah, like mobility is great, stretch is great, you know, um, arm length is not bad, um, you kind of have to play with the cuff, um, adjustment with the with the velcro there because um, when you have it loose it's not as bad but when you have it tight it definitely pulls down um, but not as bad um, you got a chest pocket um, but yeah this is just you know it's a great climbing shell um, 
and I still I, I still use it on and off, and I plan on using it some more this season as well. I just what I kind of ran into is like one of the first days out this season of using it with my Sirocco, um, when I had the hood up, it just pulled on the helmet weird, and I think I had to just I had to figure out the fit of how I have to have the hood. Because the hood is definitely good, but the hood is also kind of rigid on this. So whenever you look up, it pulls whatever you have on top of your head up. And when you have a helmet, it just puts it in a weirder position. You know, pulling those uh, shock cords down just to get that um, get that cinched up might solve that. I'm not 100% sure. It does have a back one, so you can cinch that down too. Um, yeah, it's just I, I do really love this jacket still. Um, it does have a Rico reflector in the back, which is nice. Um, I just love the visibility of it. It's super bright. Um, so far, you know, they did re they did come out with the dual aspect, which is kind of the replacement for it, but there really hasn't been a great replacement for it. Um, maybe down the road there will be. Maybe not. Um, I can definitely tell you that this jacket, as you know, because it is a, like more like a soft shell, but it's a hard shell. It's great. You know, you get a lot of abrasion resistance. The only kind of downside with it is it is pretty heavy. Um, it's definitely a heavier shell, and that's maybe also why I've gone to the Storm Ten. Is that even though it's a, it's just super lightweight, but I've definitely put the Storm Ten through a lot, so I've been soaked in it, and I've been fine. Um, but I definitely plan on using the galvanized um, more here and there because I'm not done with it yet. But uh. Yeah, that's the galvanized. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.